I know it is a great heading to peak curiosity. <laughs> and um, look, you're not going to regret listening to this. It's, it's pretty awesome. Um, so I posted a video. You can find it on Zed Talks YouTube called The Demon Dialogues. The three, I said, the three reasons that people fight in relationships. So that's on my YouTube Zed Talks. It's based on the book Hold Me Tight by Dr. Sue Johnson. Uh, this kind of specifies one area that which is the most common reason that people fight and it's we get into a who's the bad guy dynamic where we're both like well you're like this and you're like and that's hypocrisy you do that don't say I did it because you do that and it's just like and no one's getting anywhere hey Liv Um, and so you're just blaming each other and you no one's getting validated and it just doesn't work right so that's the most common like escalation and the remedy to that who's the bad guy is recognizing when it's happening. So if you can go, oh, we're playing who's the bad guy, realize that both of your hearts are closed and neither of you are listening and tap out, yeah? Like just, we're not gonna get anywhere. We're just gonna keep saying stuff that hurts each other or that we're gonna have to talk about later because I didn't actually mean that, but like, because they're not validating you. We go to get more evidence as to why your point is valid and they should apologize and they should validate you. So if you feel like they've been thoughtless you'll go and you'll get more occasions where, and this is another time you were thoughtless, and this is another time you were thoughtless, and this is, but the the other person's heart shut down and they're trying to get validation for their point of view in that moment. They're not listening to your evidence either. They're just getting their own evidence as to why you should back down and why you should apologize. So that is like a really futile result. And we've all been there, right? Whether it's with a sibling or a parent, you both got your hearts closed and you're not listening and you're not willing to validate and you're just trying to force them to submit to your will, right? So that, the only way out of that is to go, ah, oh, playing who's the bad guy and first person to recognize it wins. Let's walk away. We're both upset. We're both angry. We're both triggered, counter triggered. And that's not like a bad person. Like everyone gets triggered. Everyone gets counter triggered and you can't help it. You can be sitting there going, please tell me what's wrong. And they go, well, actually, look, can you just like try to be quiet when I'm sleeping? Cause it wakes me up and they'll go, it's not my fucking fault. You work night shift, blah, blah. you know, it's, they can't help that they get counter triggered. Like it's not, it's not a choice. Right. And you can be really like, I'm, I'm about to listen to you and just get counter triggered by what they say. Right. And it's, even if people are being really vulnerable and soft and and sweet about their needs, it, it, you can't help it, right? But um, this dude, Mark Groves, who I listen to, is really good with attachment and relationships and stuff. He goes, the way that a fight, a fight, <laughs> the way that a fight, <laughs> the way that a fight starts is the way that it ends, all right? And so if the, if the fight starts with like one person expressing a need, because it's always a need, it's always like some variety of badly communicating a need or really vulnerably communicating a need. But if someone starts with like, <laughs> It's your fucking problem. It's going to end with like, uh, fine, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's like you start with, uh, you're going to end with, because uh, it set the tone of that interaction, like the where you started from and the energy that's went into it started with, uh, fine, it's going to end with that, right? And if, if you start with like, hey, like, I just want to, and it's like, you can escalate to anger and stuff, but you're going to land on like, look, I know all you're trying to say is, can I just be a bit quieter when you're asleep. Look, I'll shut the door. I'll make sure the door's shut. I'll try not to make so much noise in the kitchen. I'll shut the kitchen door. It'll end in that tone. Like, look, can you just, and it's like, okay, I'll just try, you know, the vibe that you start with is a vibe you end with. So that being said, when we're like not great at expressing our needs, I'm going to talk more about this with attachment. It's hard to start with a like, hey, can, you know, can we have a chat? It's hard to start with that if like you're ashamed of having needs, which is very like male and very avoidant and very like wog actually, if you're still there and like we're, you know, we're, we're more like raised with violence than, you know, and, and um, discipline than like, hey, let's talk about how we're feeling. Oh, that's really annoying. Sorry, I'll do it in a different room. We're, we're, we're not trained like that, you know? So to actually have needs comes with this like, barrage of like trauma that you know when you have a need you just feel overwhelmed like oh there's no way that I'm allowed to say this <laughs> yeah like to go to someone who you love and for them to go yeah yeah I understand I'm not going to do that to you anymore like it's just like unheard of so we feel really ashamed of 
the needs. However, here's my counterpoint is like after the anger and the yelling, you feel shame anyway. Like the shame is going to come out. And this is the thing I've had to accept, like from like becoming more congruent with shame and just like lying on my bed, feeling like shit, feeling guilty for stuff that I've done and feeling ashamed and like just accepting that that's a part of life is you're going to feel shame no matter what. So yeah, totally, man. Weak, weakness. And I think most men, it's like being needy is weakness. And it's like, it's going to come out in the anger anyway. You're going to feel ashamed and needy by the end of the anger where you've screamed at this person who you love and you're like, oh, I'm a fucking monster. What the fuck's wrong with me? If you start with what the fuck's wrong with me and go, can you just be quiet when I'm sleeping, please? Like, And actually, the correct way to say this, and I've learned this from Coda, is not can you or you do this you're like this, you need help. Anytime you say you, it does the close hearted thing and they start defending, not validating, not understanding, not listening. So you is like a trigger for everyone. Everyone is triggered by the you, all right? The way you say it is I feel. And even like I feel when you is like, it's a bit dodgy. Like I will tiptoe around it. I go, I feel when I'm sleeping and someone is making noise I feel like disrespected and like my safety is at risk and like my needs aren't important and it's not important as to whether I get enough sleep to have a good day. So I just said, I, 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 I feel, I feel, I feel. And it kind of allows them to go when someone's making noise. Yeah, someone. Yeah. Oh, I also don't like when someone is making noise. But when you start saying you, people just, you know, they, they, and they yeah, well, you make noise, you know, it becomes this like, who's the bad guy thing is what I was talking about at the start. So what actually creates conflicts that don't work in this who's the bad guy thing is the heart closing. All right. So when our hearts open and we're being vulnerable and we're like, yeah, look, I understand. That's an open hearted thing, right? If we start with a closed heart, because we're not used to voicing our needs, because we are a bit male and a bit avoidant. And I, you know, women are avoidant too. You know, the girls that don't ever text you back, that's avoidant. Yeah, no worries. That's avoidant. They're like the anxiety gets peaked, right? And it's like generally women have anxious attachment if they've been like traumatized by loved ones and stuff. It's most generally an anxious woman who really wants to talk and a man who's like, I don't like talking. It brings up my feelings. That's really common, but it's not, it's not male and female like that. And as we move into a genderless society, people who um, are reluctant to voice their needs because it's never fucking paid off need to have this safe space to voice their needs, right? And that coming in closed hearted because you feel shame about having needs will gradually subside to I'm used to you listening when I come forward with a need. So this is fine. Like, hey, I know you don't mean to make noise when I'm asleep, but I just feel it would be great if we could close the door. (laughs) Like just I, I feel that it's not unreasonable for both of us to be quiet when the other one's sleeping. I feel both of us, you know, it's not you do this to me. It's we could both stand to be a little bit more understanding about noise when the other one's sleeping, right? Open hearted, right? But it's you can do it completely right and their heart will still close. And again, identifying hearts closed, not going to get anywhere, no validation, no understanding. There's no point in us talking. I'm just going to walk away and we can come back when this is you know, it's a better time to have this conversation because both of us are just pushing away the shame of not liking how this feels. And you can do it really maliciously or you can do it really childishly. Like, yeah, well, you do stuff as well. So fuck you, you know, or like here's other times you've done stuff. So fuck you, you know, or you can be like, oh, it's always something, you know, and it's still not validating. It's still not understanding. It's still not listening, right? And this is the thing that men are accused of the most is not listening, not listening, not listening. What's actually happening is we're so shit at shame congruence that like when when a, when a girl or not a girl, not a boy, sorry, everyone who's gender sensitive, um, when someone is not just going, ah, oh, okay, that sucks, dude. I'm really sorry that sounds really hard and I wish life wasn't this hard for you and I'll do my best to support you in creating a safer environment for yourself. Whenever anyone's not saying that, it's like, fuck you. And it just, it triggers anger. Like you're, you're asking for them to understand and validate you and they're defending themselves. It's like, dude, I just, oh fuck. It's frustrating. Right. And everyone does it. Everyone cracks it and they either crack it in a passive aggressive way or a very aggressive way. Right. It's not, it's not hard and it's because the heart closes when we feel accused. You, heart closed. 
or you come in with your needs and your heart's closed because you're not used to getting them met. So you go, oh, and they go, oh, and their heart's closed as well, right? Can't be done. All right. So let's move into solutions, solution focused. Um, understanding, nod and listen. Okay, so when it's their turn, all right, and this is important, it's my turn because I brought you a need, all right? I came to you and said, hey, I'm having this problem. Hopefully you can either keep your heart open or not speak if your heart closed. And that's the frame. It's like, it's my turn, I'm bringing a need to you. And the person who's listening with good intentions, if they notice their heart closing, goes like, sorry, I'm just, I, I can't, I need a minute. Like I'm listening, but I need, I'm gonna just say the wrong thing right now. Cause I feel attacked and I feel like counterattacking. Yeah. So it's like, you be quiet. You know, it's they want to, they want to respond with a defense. Yeah. So it's your turn, right? Cause if we both have a turn at the same time, we both end up shouting our needs and how it's the other person's fault. Who's the bad guy and we get nowhere. And the only way out of that is to recognize both your hearts are closed. We're playing who's the bad guy. Tap, tap. Let's talk about this later. All right, let's talk about this after we've calmed down. Because you'll remember, it's just our lizard brain only has like a certain amount of scope with like our mental capacity. It's, it's for fight or flight. So when we feel attacked, we go into fight or flight mode. All like this prefrontal human cortex, right? With all the complex thinking, it turns off. It's do I run away from the tiger or do I fight it? I don't know, dead, yeah? So all of the fucking logic stuff turns off. It just goes, run or fight, run or fight. And when your partner's like, hey, can you just like be a bit quiet when I'm sleeping? You're like, do I fight them or do I run? And it's like, run, always. There's no point fighting your partner. It'll just hurt them and it'll just invalidate both of you. And then people who are a bit avoidant, who don't like voicing their needs, get less likely to voice their needs because it's like just like my whole life no one listens no one understands me why did i even reach out this time i thought this person was different i thought they would finally understand me of course not there's something intrinsically wrong with me and i can't have needs and it's disgusting and i feel ashamed right so that's the avoiding thing so turns right in having the turn and the other person's supposed to listen because it's your turn Help them make the right choice as well. If it's my turn and I'm like, hey, I feel like it would be, be better if we shut the door when I'm sleeping because the noise wakes me up and it really like upsets me and stuff. And they start to defend themselves. You gotta go, hey, hey, it's my turn. Remember? Remember the turns? I can see your heart's closed. Do you need a minute? Because I just needed to say this. I'm not asking you to apologize. I'm not asking you to validate me because the real solution is to validate yourself, right? This this makes this all much easier, is, is before even having the conversation, you're like, it is completely reasonable that I'm allowed to sleep when I'm sleeping. That's completely reasonable for me to have that need. It's not even a complicated need, it is a basic survival need that I sleep enough that I don't feel like shit all day and I can function. That's completely reasonable. And to have a boundary around that, if someone's like not really conscious that they're like bothering you while you're sleeping completely reasonable and it's really sad that a lot of us have like this belief that we don't deserve shit like that when it's fucking intrinsic it's we all need that we all need to sleep we all need to eat we need somewhere to shit we need somewhere to bathe we need that self-respect just like basic hygiene self-respect you know it's not unreasonable right and it's sad that we think it might be unreasonable right so in voicing that need, help them make the right choice in supporting you correctly. Like they might start defending themselves and you go, hey, 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 I'm not accusing you. It's just my turn. I'm just telling the truth, right? And if you validate yourself before having that conversation with them, it's much easier for you to like not compromise and not fight back when they get triggered and then you can't triggered and then we're in who's the bad guy and we're all dead and no one's learning anything, right? So um, validating yourself internally it, it really helps to not need the response from the other person. And um, we want to forgive people internally as well. It's like, we don't want them to apologize and for it, our happiness to be resting on that. And I know from my experience, and a lot of people have said the same thing to me, is like, you finally get that apology you've always wanted and it doesn't feel any better. I don't know why, but it's like, it's like the grudge of like resenting them has like something to it that makes us feel powerful or gives us a sense of self that them apologizing doesn't make us want to let go of. It's like, no, I want to resent you for the rest of my life because you hurt me. 
And when they apologize, you're like, well, I don't want to let go of the resentment. Like you hurting me is still true to me and I haven't gotten around to forgiving you. So the apology actually doesn't do anything. And so when you're sharing like this, when you're like, I've got a need and I need you to acknowledge that I need you to be quiet when I'm sleeping, them apologizing doesn't help. Them changing their behavior and allowing you to sleep is what helps. So what makes this easier is validating yourself about having reasonable needs outside of the conversation you have with that person and forgiving people in your own time and not expecting that an apology from them will help you attain forgiveness because it actually doesn't. Forgiveness is something you reach on your own when you learn to empathize like, oh, they're rushing. That's why they make noise when I'm sleeping. They're like flustered and rushing and it's like, I could help them get up earlier so that they're not rushing so they don't give me noise, but it's like, that's not what the conversation's about. And giving unsolicited advice especially when there's triggering and counter triggering and arguing doesn't work. Like nobody likes hearing, I know what's right for you. I know what you need to hear. I know what you need to do. Here's what you should do. It's the same as the you thing. You, when you do this, you do that. You're like this. Will you do that as well? It just hurts. Like when someone's telling you that they know what's best for you, it just makes it sound like you're stupid. It's like, well, you're stupid and I know what you need to do. It doesn't fucking make you feel empowered or that you love yourself or that things are going well it makes you feel like you don't know what you're doing and other people think it's obvious that you don't know what you're doing so unsolicited advice is really like painful and it can be coming from a good place like hey you just need to get a job and then you won't be miserable you'll have purpose you'll have money and it's like yeah i know i need to get a job all i do is fucking think about this and try to get jobs fuck i don't need your advice i didn't ask you to give me advice right it just hurts and people like really do mean well and they just hurt each other by giving advice at the wrong time. Unless someone asks you, what do you think? Don't give them advice ever, ever. Unless it's a coaching environment and money's on the table, all right? Because it doesn't inspire climbing, it inspires depression, you know? It just makes them feel dumb. All right, so validate yourself, forgive others. The external validation and the external apology doesn't work anyway, but trying to get it causes problems. All right. It just doesn't fucking work. So we need to validate ourselves and forgive internally, empathize. Why did that person do that to me? It can be the most horrible thing in the world. And you got to go, why did they do that? Yeah. Okay. I get it. That I would possibly do that in that moment as it's possible. I can see the humanity in that bad decision that they made. Hopefully they learned from it, but I don't need the external validation of going, Oh, you did learn from it. Like it's a bonus if you can see that they learned from it. And in what I'm saying about not expecting an apology and and the apology not being the solution, if someone apologizes to you and then keeps abusing you or doing the wrong thing, fuck the apology, yeah? Do you know what I mean? Like apologies do not mean shit. It's nice and it's a nice sentiment and it can have a really beautiful vibe where you're like, thank you, you're humbling yourself by apologizing and admitting whatever, but we can't rely on that. We can't rely on people to apologize, especially when they've been counter triggered and their hearts closed. And you're like, just fucking apologize. Here's all the other reasons, like getting this evidence to prove that they're wrong. Like, yeah, here's another time you were thoughtless. Here's another time you did that. Here's another time. Just fucking apologize. I've got all this proof that you're a dick. Just admit it. Just say sorry. And it's like, it doesn't work. It never works. Both your hearts are closed and you're both trying to shake an apology out of each other. Whose fucking turn was it? This is what I'm saying about the turns, right? And it's much easier to be the listener to someone whose turn it is when they're like, here's my need. I'm really upset about this. I feel, I feel, I feel. Never you and never unsolicited advice. When you are more shame congruent, when it's like, they're not trying to shame you, okay? They're just trying to say, this is how I feel. And if we're validating ourselves and forgiving others in our own time instead of trying to get apologies. If your shame comes up when they're sharing, it's like, oh, okay. I'm reminded of my shame right now. They're not trying to shame you. Just because they're talking and you feel shame does not mean that they're trying to shame you. Most of the time, people are just sharing their emotions, all right? And that might come sort of unfamiliar to avoidant people because we're not used to expressing our needs because, you know, we've had our needs punished and shamed at every turn. So we're ashamed of having needs, let alone voicing them. And it can be hard to say it with an open heart. But when we're sharing vulnerably, it's about telling the truth, right? And all this codependency stuff, like the unsolicited advice, it's okay to have needs. The vulnerable share is about 
just telling the truth. And it just feels good to get it off your chest and for someone to hold space for you and go, I'm trying to understand you. It's your turn. All right. And that's why we have to have turns. I'm trying to understand you. It's your turn. And if they don't do a good job of holding space, you got to help them hold space. And I've gotten it wrong many, 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 many times. I've defended myself. I've closed my heart. I've avoided shame. And the only thing that works is like nodding and making helpful noises. And it's much easier with friends than it is with lovers. Okay. Because there's this like invested interest. And if they think I'm a bad person, this relationship's not going to work out. I'm not good enough to be loved. Like all of this like attachment trauma comes out because it's your partner, you know, your best friend. You're like, ah, you win some, you lose somebody. And they're like, <laughs> thanks, man. I just needed to get that off my chest. It's fine. You know, you get these circles of women in cafes listening to each other, just going, mm, mm, me too. Yes. Yes, me too. And then she sells the same story to her husband. And he's like, oh, what the fuck? It's your fault. That is your fault. And it's like, that's not what I'm asking for. I'm just asking for you to go. That sucks, dude. That fucking sucks. It's hard being you. Yep. And then you're waiting for them to sigh. Yeah. So the, the listener, it's one person's turn and the listener is listening. And then the person whose turn it is, they go, <sighs> harmony restored, right? Or they smile. They're like, thank you. Thank you for listening, right? But the share is about telling the truth. This person doesn't apologize. This person doesn't defend. This person doesn't react. It's just telling the truth. It's like, it's really hard for me. I find it hard to sleep when there's noise. It's like, ah, that's better. I got it out. It's been driving me crazy in my head. I just needed to fucking tell someone. Telling the person that I love the most is pretty satisfying. <laughs> tell the truth. They might be happy. They might defend themselves. They might not. You're just telling the truth. You're not looking for an apology. You're not looking for validation. You just get it off your chest. That's how needs works, right? I mean, that's how feelings works, right? If your needs are available to be met, there might be a little kickback as well. I made a video on boundaries and it's like when you outline a boundary, like if, if they're not getting it, expressing it vulnerably in this way and you're like, okay, I have to set a boundary. If we're going to sleep in the same house, if you get up before me, I need you to shut the bedroom door. And this, see, this is much more assertive. This is a much more like calm and assertive kind of cold. I need you to shut the door when I'm sleeping because it really just, it's not working for me. So I need you to shut the door when I'm sleeping. And they're going to go, yeah, but I mean, I, it's, I get up early because I come in a rush and I got to leave earlier. So blah, blah, blah. And you go, I understand that. I need you to shut the door when I'm sleeping and say it at the same level. Not like I need you to shut the door when I'm sleeping. Cause then now we're in who's the bad guy. Yeah. It escalates and then their heart closes and then they're angry and they, they want to counter attack at the same level you did. Cause counter triggering is life. So I was restate the boundary at the same level after they kick off and have a squirm, all right? So this is like an intermediary thing besides a full-blown fight and a vulnerable conversation in the middle is setting a boundary. Is like, okay, we're not getting anywhere here. So shut the door when I'm sleeping or I'm not going to sleep over here anymore. There's a consequence to the boundary calmly, assertively. I need this and if I can't get it, I'm going to have to take steps to be safe in this way. All right. So this is if none of the vulnerability and understanding works and you calmly and assertively outline your need and the consequence for not meeting that need. And sometimes you have to break up with people or you have to quit your job or you have to stop being friends with someone because they're not capable of getting it because their values are in conflict. And they're like, well, we should all be responsible for our own feelings. Totally true. But if they're like, you need to be responsible for your feelings. Therefore, I'm going to keep doing this thing that re-traumatizes you all the time. Or like, no, I'm going to keep like leading you down the wrong path. I'm going to keep talking you into drinking or doing drugs or what, you know, some maladaptive thing. And you're like, I really just can't be friends with this person anymore because they're not getting it and they're not ready to create a safe environment for me. If the vulnerability and the sharing doesn't work and the boundaries don't work, it's like you need to move away from that person. But most of the time, vulnerability does work, all right? This is what I'm saying is like, if you approach with an open heart, they're more likely to maintain an open heart. If you approach afraid of your needs with a closed heart, they're more likely to get counter-triggered and expect that and help them make the right choice. I just need you to listen and understand. I just need to know you understand and not validate and not apologize. Just, I'm just telling the truth. I'm just sharing. PM me with questions. That was everything I had written down. So please, etc. But yeah, validate yourself forgive others try to empathize with your greatest abusers your parents had it fucking rough as well man being a human sucks it absolutely sucks 
<sighs> and sitting with things like shame and suffering, like the only way to really be a human is to embrace the suffering and just fucking feel bad. Because the more we try to push it away, the more it pops up again and it just takes longer. It's like, I feel like shit in the morning, then I do heroin and then I don't remember for the rest of the day. Then I feel like shit in the morning, then I do heroin and I don't remember for the rest of the day. It's like those not remembering periods are times when you could have like worked through the healing, yeah? Just being fucking miserable until it goes away, until the grief dies down, until the regret dies. You just have to fucking feel it. That's what feelings are. It's like trying to come out. It's trying to express. And it's awful. It is the most awful thing. Being alive fucking sucks, but running away from it just doesn't help. We have to be brave. We have to face ourselves. We have to face the world. And the longer you put it off, the more homework you got. And you're going to have more problems later, so you may as well just fucking face the ones that are there now. <sighs> and forgive ourselves, not just forgiving others. Forgive ourselves for not knowing any better at the time. And at least we know better now. At least we learned. Love. Bye.